Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930 and today I wanted to try something a little different. I want to start by saying I really enjoy making these videos and I hope you guys are enjoying the content I'm posting here. Secondly, I want to start a new series of videos where we go back and look at the history of some of gaming's biggest franchises. I love seeing the evolution of technology and game design and I wanted to show you guys just how far some of our most popular games have changed over the years. To start off this new segment, let's take a look at the Battlefield franchise. Now there's a lot of information to talk about with each game, so I decided to split up these videos based on each game, with the end goal of having a playlist for each franchise so you can easily go through and see how much of these games have actually changed. I also want to include a video at the end of each playlist that will simply show a montage of all the games and focus simply on how the game's visuals have changed. Obviously games are going to look better as the years go on, so I wanted to spend more time here talking about the actual gameplay as opposed to just what the graphics look like. So let's just get right into it and start by talking about Battlefield 1942. Battlefield 1942 released in fall 2002 for the PC and was eventually re-released for the Mac in spring 2004. It was created by DICE and was built on the Refractor Engine. The Refractor Engine was used earlier in 1999 to make a game called Codename Eagle by Take-Two Interactive and Refraction Games. This engine was acquired by DICE and would later help them create 1942 and Battlefield Vietnam, and it also laid the groundwork for DICE to create Refractor Engine 2.0, the engine used for Battlefield 2, 2142, and some of DICE's free-to-play Battlefield titles like Battlefield Heroes. The studio at DICE in 2002 consisted of only 14 people. Only 14 people made 1942, that's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, 1942 focused entirely on the Second World War, with levels being strongly based on true battles that happened in history, including Iwo Jima, Stalingrad, Operation Market Garden, and D-Day. This was typical of the early 2000s, as most shooter video games had left the sci-fi genre of games like Quake and Doom, and were seeking to grasp a more realistic and darker approach of a World War II game. With World War II games coming out seemingly every day back then, it's surprising that only Battlefield 1942 managed to capture the feeling of a World War battle with full online multiplayer. Most of the games were relying on their single player experience to deliver a heavily scripted World War II fantasy. The game was made only for PC, but it was supposed to actually come out on Xbox in 2001, but EA cancelled it so that DICE could focus on making more expansion packs for the PC version instead. The modding community for 1942 was a major part of the game's popularity. Some mods, like Action BF, featured ideas like Commander Class, Airstrikes, and Med Bags that you throw down that would later be used in the formula for the Battlefield franchise. Now let's take a minute to talk about the overall design of the game itself. We're done with all the random facts. Uh, 1942 actually featured a full single player campaign that allowed you to play through conquest matches with bots in a specific map order. The campaign allows you to play as either the Allies or the Axis powers if you choose. The instant action option allowed you to play with bots on any map you chose, so you didn't have to play through the campaign in a specific order, you could just jump right in. And uh, it, had, it allowed you to play pretty much every map that was available in the multiplayer on its full size with a full set of bots, up to 64 players. So that was always fun and you can still play it today without any issues. The real meat of the game though came from the competitive multiplayer mode. Since this game came out back in the golden age of PC gaming, this game featured a full server browser, so there was no pesky party system or matchmaking wait times. You just looked for a server you liked and you joined it. Battlefield 1942 was also one of the first games to put an emphasis on teamwork. Killing the enemies was only half the battle, Battlefield had you capturing flags with your teammates as well. There was no type of squad system however, and there was also no commander, and there wasn't even any voice chat. You could type in the team chat to try and rally friend f friendly players together, but other than that, you were forced to move blindly towards objectives and hope your team had the same idea. You could also utilize the game's comma rows, which was actually just a series of voice commands you could activate using the F keys. Now let's take a moment to talk about the game's AI quality. If you weren't interested in playing online, which I remember personally not being a fan of back then, then you could always enjoy Battlefield 1942 completely offline. All the maps were available to play with fully populated 64 player sized maps thanks to the game's bots. Now the bots weren't all that smart, it was 2002 after all, but they did give the illusion of scale and made it feel like you were part of a large battle, something that wasn't really commonplace in video games back in the day. Generally the bots would have perfect aim and could kill you with a headshot as long as you were in front of them for long enough. If you were trying to kill an AI but missed, chances are the bot would kill you a few seconds later with an amazing headshot. And let's talk a little bit about progression and customization. There really wasn't any in 1942. 
When you joined a match online, you had as much access to the game's weapons and vehicles as anyone else in the game. You couldn't customize your weapons or appearance either. All classes had team-specific weapons that you could not change unless you found another player's weapon lying on the ground in the field. In fact, progression never really became a thing until Battlefield 2. And now let's talk about the game's classes. Like most Battlefield games, 1942 offers several different soldier classes to choose from, each offering their own distinct advantages and disadvantages. This style of multiplayer was first introduced into popular context by the original Quake mod Team Fortress in 1996. So the first class I want to talk about is the Sniper class. The Sniper class offered a long-range bolt-action rifle that had painfully long reload times and seriously obnoxious recoil, making it a very difficult weapon to get follow-up kills with. I found that the number 4 sniper, one of the more common sniper rifles in the game, can one-shot, headshot most enemies, but occasionally I had to hit an enemy twice to kill them. The class also offers a knife, pistol, frag grenade, and binoculars. The binoculars allow you to mark a position for artillery. If another player was using an artillery-based weapon, they'd see a marker on their minimap and could fire on that position for kills. I wasn't able to test this because the online for 1942 has been completely shut down, but I can't imagine this feature was used very effectively, as there was already very little communication to begin with. There also doesn't seem to be much incentive to use a binocular since it only really helps the player firing artillery and not so much the sniper. Uh, the assault class is pretty straightforward. Players get access to either LMGs or assault rifles based on what team and map they're playing on, and their only role is to kill enemy infantry. They are also armed with a combat knife, pistol, and grenade. They may not have had as much to take out tanks with as the assault class in Battlefield 1 today, but the grenades I found were actually pretty effective if you threw enough of them at a single tank. Now the medic class in 1942 had access to the game's submachine guns. These SMGs were garbage at medium to long range and were only really effective at close range in the trenches. The medic also had the ability to heal themselves and friendly teammates. There was no way to revive down teammates in 1942, there was no syringe or defibrillator in this game. The Engineer had a bolt-action rifle without scope, making them a decent medium-range class. They also had access to mines, TNT, and a repair tool making them one of the best classes for setting up ambushes. The Anti-Tank class is pretty ridiculous to today's standards. The class had access to just a knife, a pistol, and a bazooka, which could be used to combat enemy vehicles. With a fresh spawn, the player had access to six rockets, including the one loaded into the launcher, making it very easy to take out enemy armor if enough players with the AT class were around. But these anti-tank units were absolutely terrible in infantry to infantry combat because the pistol was very weak and they could have benefited from having at least an SMG to back them up. Uh, now the grenades are one of the few weapons that pretty much every class have in common. Most of these classes have access to simple fragmentation grenades which would blow enemies across the map almost every time you threw one. It's really funny to see. They had devastating amounts of damage and were spammed quite a bit online. The pistols behave as you'd expect with very low damage output and poor accuracy at anything past close range, and the knife felt more like a joke weapon than anything else in this game. You had to actually scroll through your weapons to equip it rather than having a specific knife button to press whenever you're behind somebody. And there were no animations to take anybody out, you would just swing this knife around wildly until it killed somebody. Now, one of the biggest draws to 1942 back when the game came out is its focus on vehicles. Before this game, there really weren't that many games that let you drive vehicles on a battlefield. Uh, so this game was all about that. It had pretty much every vehicle you can imagine from World War II. From jeeps, to trucks, to tanks, boats, battleships, aircraft carriers, submarines, planes, bombers, everything. Everything you can imagine was in this game, and they did a fantastic job with that. Uh, the planes, though, were really difficult to handle. I tried flying one of them. I could not believe how much more difficult they are than the planes in video games today. So they definitely made that a lot more user friendly. Um, the maps, there was a lot of maps in this game. I was actually pretty surprised. Uh, the base game when it launched actually launched with 16 maps. Battlefield games lately in the past like three, four years have launched with only eight maps. Uh, five maps were actually added in free patches. Six maps were added with the Road to Rome expansion, which today would just be DLC. And then eight maps were added with the Secret Weapons of World War II expansion. And then after that, one more map was added in a free patch to the Secret Weapons of World War II expansion. So that's a, that's a ton of maps. That is a ton of content. I cannot believe Battlefield games aren't like that anymore. And there was a lot of variety to them, too. Uh, there was four theaters of war from the Pacific to Africa to both the East and West of Europe and tons and tons of maps. Pretty much every major battle in World War II was featured in this game. 
Um, let's talk about the balance though. The, the maps were designed way different than they are today. Uh, back in the day, in 1942, maps were mostly unbalanced on purpose, forcing one team to defend land while the other team had to attack. Generally, the tickets for conquest were set up in a way that gave the attackers a better chance of gaining a foothold on maps like Omaha Beach. Later, Battlefield games would give both teams equal amounts of tickets and generally aim to give both teams a fair chance of gaining decent control of the map right from the start. Weapons were not only class-specific, but also team-specific, meaning some teams had access to better weapons than others. For example, the Thompson submachine gun for the American medics was a much easier weapon to use than the MP40 for the Nazi team. This kind of balancing was authentic to history, but did cause some issues in terms of balancing the online gameplay. Now, Battlefield 1942 also had two large expansion packs that added over 12 maps to the already impressive list of levels to play on. The first expansion, named Road, Road to Rome, brought players to the Italian front with access to a new Axis team, the Italians, along with a few new weapons and six new maps all based around the Italian countryside. Later on, DICE would develop a second, larger expansion named Secret Weapons of World War II. This expansion didn't take itself too seriously as it introduced ridiculously new weapons and vehicles, like a jetpack, a stealth fighter, World War II helicopters, and tanks with ridiculously large cannons. This expansion also added eight more maps to the mix, making it one of the big biggest expansions to a Battlefield game still to this day. So that pretty much wraps things up. Battlefield 1942 received generally high scores from most game reviewers and continues to be a fan favorite in the franchise. But the mods that emerged from popularity of Battlefield 1942 are what drove Battlefield to become an even bigger success. Some mods actually brought 1942 to the present day and introduced entirely new maps, vehicles, physics, everything, and made it a completely different game. Mods like this are what inspired DICE to eventually make Battlefield 2. But we'll be talking about that game later. Uh, next up, we'll be talking about Battlefield Vietnam. So be sure to stay tuned to my channel. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you all next time.